Hello and welcome to New Earth Lifestyles. New Earth Lifestyles. Talking about new ways of looking at life. Ways that maybe you haven't thought of before or maybe you have and haven't tried them. Ways, uh, looking at ways of uh, living your life to the fullest, healthiest, strongest, and best way possible. Ah, so I forgot my bowl, my ma mindfulness bell actually, left it in my car. I emptied some things out so I wouldn't be carrying hem heavy, heavy weight, and lo and behold, I forgot to put it back in my bag, so I brought my trusty drum, and we're going to talk about drumming today. So this is my goddess drum that I made. Um, when did I make this? I date my things. And I, uh, 2001, I made this drum. So we're going to talk about drumming today, drums, and what some of the different animal hives mean, and why would you want to make a drum anyway? What does that do for you? So I have my mindfulness drum here. So when we need to take a breath, we'll go, oops, not like that. There we go. <laughs> I get carried away drumming, as you can see. It puts me into a trance almost immediately. Just the sound of the drum beat. So we'll do some more talking about that in a minute. April 2nd, April Fool's Day was yesterday. Did anyone play any April Fool's jokes on you? I can't say that I did any, nor did I have any done with, to me. <laughs> my dad used to be a famous for that, doing April Fool's jokes to, his, to my mom and to um, his friends and my family. We were, used to be big on that. I, ne I never was big on it because I didn't like being joked to. I didn't mind playing jokes on people, but I don't like receiving lots of times practical jokes. So um, yesterday was a day to remember my father and my family for their practical jokehood <laughs> and ways of having fun, I guess, welcoming in the spring in a new way, April Fool's Day, the first day of April. And it feels like spring. Yahoo! Spring is springing here. I wanted to give you a little uh, catch up on the pumpkin seeds that we planted here back in March. I brought them in two weeks ago and transplanted them into soil and they've gotten to a point now where uh, two of them, two out of three, are really shooting up. They've got three leaves and I didn't have a way of carrying them here today when I get, a, um, get them situated into bigger pots and a carrying case to show them to you. I will bring them maybe um, next time or in two weeks to, I'm sure they'll be pretty big. So um, that was a symbol of springtime for me to, to plant those seeds on the show, not only of springtime, but the miracle of life. And that's really what we all can look at as ways of changing our lives or moving into different directions to improve our lives is what do you, how do you think about God? How do you think about source energy? How do you think about the unseen world that is all around us? This is not emptiness. This is, we think of this as empty space. It's full of information. It's full of consciousness. It's full of vibration right here, every, the space, right where you are, right where I am, all the time. It's full of space. It's full of that energy that feeds those pumpkin plants, that feeds everything, actually, that is alive or things that we think are not alive, like this desk or like rocks or trees. Well, of course, we know trees are alive, but just to be curious about, wow, and, and what is what is this that we can't see? Some people can see this, can see the, the vibration that's all around us and all the information that I hold in my energy field is all here right now. I don't have that ability to see. I have uh, other intuitive abilities, but some people do have the ability to see the energy around me and what it's saying and what I'm holding in my energy field. So just to be curious about that, what does that mean for you? Hmm. The other thing I'm going to talk about today is um, Toastmasters. I became a member of Toastmasters in Concord to help me speak better, to help me become um, a motivational speaker, perhaps. Um, and this television show has helped me tremendously to do this off the cuff speaking to you, to the camera, every week on this television show, New Earth Lifestyles, that I created. 
I, I was guided to create the show. I got a medita I got a message in a meditation to ask how to do this, and lo and behold, here I am, <laughs> speaking to you about my passion about new earth, new ways of looking at life. So let's have a little drum on that. Kind of hard to gong the drum. Gong the drum. Ah, <sighs> drumming is another way of also bringing yourself back to. <laughs> breathing, breathing in and breathing out. And drumming and the circle, isn't it's a circle, isn't it? So let's get into talking a little bit about drums and drumming. And um, before I actually get right into that, I would like to explain how I got into drumming um, back in the 1990s, 94 maybe. I don't know if I've told the story before, but I went to an herbal conference down in uh, Wheaton College in Norton, Massachusetts, Norton, Massachusetts, and I was there for a weekend. It was a beautiful weekend. It was my first immersion into kind of this new age, hippie, earth-based understanding of life and herbs and the medicinal properties of herbs and the energy, energies and energy fields. I, I never had any concept of energy fields and health on that on that in that uh, perspective from that perspective of herbs and earth based things i was an accountant in 1992 1994 and so i was pretty closed minded uh, i was a very healthy person i've been healthy all of my life thank thank uh, god thank goodness um, and so i really never had any need to um, use the medical establishment for for anything other than um, you know a, um, aspirin here or a pain not a painkiller but you know I, I did break my arm a couple times so I did have to have some uh, emergency um, b bone setting stuff for that but I was I've always been healthy I've always been a very healthy and I'm still a very healthy person and I think a lot has to do with my mother and my upbringing and my mother and father, they were very, very rarely sick. And when they were, they didn't let anybody know that they were very, very seldom were they in bed with the flu. So I had a model growing up of being healthy all the time. And when I went to this herb symposium, it was called the International Herb Symposium that was put on by um, Rosemary Gladstar and a group of people that she knew and a lot of sponsors, herbalist sponsors and so forth. But at that uh, herbal conference, that was, a, that was um, a summer solstice weekend, which was June, middle of June. And we, th but they had classes all day, both days, Saturday and Sunday. Cla they, it was on Wheaton College campus, so they had a lot of classrooms that you could, um, you didn't have to sign up for them. You just, you know, they had this whole big itinerary of different classes happening where, and you just showed up, went to the classrooms that, um, the classes that you liked or that drew you to them. And Saturday evening, this is an amazingly beautiful old, old campus in Wheaton. At Wheaton College in Norton, Massachusetts, and in the center, the, the buildings are all around, like in a big uh, circle, and in the center there's a, a an area like a big a park area, but it was recessed. The the lawn was recessed, and they called it the dimple. And it was a pretty big space, a pretty big open area that was surrounded by these big old trees. So there was the thing called the dimple in the center. And Saturday night, um, they were celebrating the summer solstice and the, the moon wasn't full but I know the moon was out and I remember um, that night especially Susan Weed um, who was an amazing herbalist from Woodstock New, uh, New York she came out dressed in this amazing red dress and she had painted her face and I I was an accountant and I looked and I saw her and I thought oh my I didn't say anything I just that energy of this primitive or this this whole earth-based celebration that was going to happen outside uh, under the under the moonlight and um, so I went outside I followed her outside and people were out there drumming and dancing out in the darkness and uh, this was a totally new experience for me 
being a, an accountant and a shy person and clo- you know afraid to interact with people as I was at that time. So that was my first introduction to drumming. That was African drumming, but these people were out, and they were in the dimple, so they're out in the grass and that was recessed, and, but they're playing these African drums and, and the music, it never stopped, it just kept going. There's this beat, this beat, this beat, and these three drums were kind of like in harmony with each other, and people were dancing all over the lawn, and it was crazy, the moon was out, and <laughs> I had my first experience of, of drumming and dancing to the moonlight on the grass, I never had any concept of that before. So that really touched a deep, deep place within me to to become more curious about, well, what, what is this all about? And I don't know if that even happened to me consciously or not. I think it was more subconscious that I was immersed in this weekend of otherworldly, otherworldly energies. People from all over the world, they were herbalists from South America, from France and Germany. Um, some Native American healers were there, um, Canada, um, I don't know no, if there were any, I think, yes, there was uh, an Asian person there from Korea, a Korea, he, Korean healer. And so I was immersed in this sort of a, a vortex of all kinds of energies of people that were, were in different vibrations than me than I, had ever, than I had ever probably experienced in my life. And that really touched someplace deep inside of me. I'm going to call it a primal chord deep inside of me that experience and and it opened up something that I had no idea I had no idea what was going to happen from there nor did I even conceive of anything happening from there but that event that event was was truly an an eye opening a mind opening a energy opening experience for me so, and that brings us to change. Change is a good thing. I stepped, what, what I did to go to that conference is I stepped out of my comfort zone. I stepped out of this rigid accountant, have to do, follow the rules, do what you're supposed to do regimen of who I thought I was. I finally stepped out of that mold and into this whole freedom arena of being a wild woman and dancing under the moonlight to drums. And, oh, it, it, it did change my life forever. So that was my first introduction to to drums and drumming. And the keynote speaker that weekend, just just for the record, was, um, I don't recall her name, but she was the person who wrote the book uh, Mutant Message Down Under. And that was a book about her experience. She was an American from California. She went to Australia and went on walkabout. And a walkabout in Australia is going out into the bush and meeting the Aborigine people, the native people, the original people of Australia, and just walking out in the plains with them. She went on walkabout for, um, I'm not sure if it was six weeks or six months. I think it was six weeks. And she's out there on walkabout with these people, and no one was saying a word for for this day and then the next day. And of course, she had an interpreter with her. And so she finally said to her interpreter, don't these people speak? These people are never talking. Well, the interpreter told her that they communicate telepathically. It's not verbal. They communicate through the mind, thoughts, through thoughts telepathically. Wow. Can you imagine thinking and knowing and being with these people that know what you're thinking all the time? (laughs) What if our world is going back to that? What if that is the way we as human beings are meant, are, are created to communicate. What if this verbal stuff that we do is, is all a cover-up for our thoughts being so powerful that it is actually a transmission of communication? So that was my first introduction into telepathic communication, was listening to her talk about her walkabout in Australia um, with Aborigines, with the native people of Australia. And it, it that that blew my mind as well. How how can people communicate telepathically? Well, they were raised on the earth. They lived on the earth. And they they communicated in the earth. That's how the animals communicate. That's how that's how nature communicates. So when you go back to nature, you can open that up. You can you can really uh, get in touch with that innate ability that we have as human beings to communicate telepathically. And in fact, if you think about it. 
if have you ever had a time when um, you just knew that someone was going to call you or you thought about someone your your friend or your loved one your daughter your son or your mother or your father and lo and behold they call you within the next few minutes of you thinking about them that's telepathic communication that is unseen quiet under the radar but it happens a lot and I'm sure there are other instances that you can think of if you thought about it of how you communicate with each other with 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 other people in your life non-verbally it happens all the time and we can train that in ourselves we can pick that up and train it it's called intuition as well <clears throat> and what does that have to do with drumming drums are the first instrument used by a man used by woman used by humanity the first instrument and actually the first instrument used by women they were first women were the first drummers on the planet way back way back thousands of years ago women were the first drummers there are um, carvings in Egypt and in France cave drawings and all over Europe and all over the the Far East of women holding drums holding their drum they would hold it um, this way and they would beat it with their hand and they would pick up the beat with their hand and and, and dance they were called tambourines tambourines I mean, they had the bells on the side so the drum is another way of communicating if you think about the Morse code for instance the Morse code was developed with dots and dashes and that's a, a, a form of communication that was used before the telephone came into being if you think about the computer the computer programming the original basic programs of computers is also a zero and a one which is on off on off basically the same thing a beat not a beat a dot or a dash it's a very very primitive communication and drums were used that way not only to communicate but to help uh, people the women to celebrate and bring out of their body um, information or to heal the body or to transcend the body into a trance state for healing or for ritual or for knowing if you want to know something you can journey you can ask the question go on a journey with a drum beat ask the question and journey and there you go you 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 will be drawn to or sent to the answer through the drum beat through the drum beat which is a beat and an auto beat a beat and a space right a beat and a space it's all the same thing it's primitive language very primitive language it's the original language you could say that goes back to well if you think about the old cowboy and Indian stories um, and movies of the smoke signals right you have the smoke goes up and then no smoke and the smoke goes up and then no smoke and the same thing with and, and the Morse code is the same thing dot dot dash dot dot dash and SOS is what dot 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 dash 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 dot 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 something like that <laughs> um, so um, or which is you hit the thing so this is this is language this is um, a strong language it's the language of vibration it's the language of unseen movement information traveling through the e waves or the air waves or the energy waves all around us I mean if you think about it how does your cell phone work how does your cell phone work it's not plugged into anything how does how do you pick up your cell phone talk into this thing this thing that you have in your hand and someone on the other side of the world is talking back with you how does that work it's energy it's a transmission of energy and frequency the same thing with the drum beat with this with sound with at the energy of the sound so communication the drum is very important for communication so that um, weekend that I was in 
at Wheaton College in Norton, Massachusetts in 2004, summer solstice weekend. That was my first experience, so that, that those drumming, that drumming did something to my cellular cells and to my, to my energy field to key me in or to awaken me to, perhaps, a new way of looking at life. I've never been the same since. I'm no longer an accountant, although I do some accounting work on the side. I, I don't go to work and come home every day, five days a week, 365 days a year, or, or whatever it is. I don't do that anymore. I, I can't do that anymore. So I'm thinking, or I'm just curious about the fact that I went to that herbal conference. I hear, heard the drum. Not only did I hear the drum, but all the intuitive process of these people from all around the world, not only the, the teachers, but then there were the participants. I think there were about 500 people at this conference, this herbal conference. So. Um, all of the energy of the intention of people thinking about herbs and thinking about healing and thinking about earth-based things and drums and walkabout and all of the thoughts that were going on there. Vegetarianism, that was my first introduction into eating vegetarian food. I was, I was just a regular meat and potatoes person, uh, meat eater, standard American diet <laughs> back then. And um, their cafeteria had what they were set up to be vegetarian if you wanted it and, and very clean organic food. So that was my first introduction to that as well. What I'm, what I'm talking about here is we can, we can become, become immersed in a new way of looking at life without even really knowing it because I didn't really know what I was getting into. I went to that herb conference to find out about menopause and about my body and about my physiology and how I could how I could shift it because I didn't want to well I had tried the medical model I had tried um, medications for what was going on in my body when I went off the medications these the symptoms returned and I I uh, knew that that I didn't want to be on drugs for the rest of my life to keep this my to keep my cycles normal so I went to this herbal conference actually to see Susan Weed who had written a book about menopause. And um, that was an amazing um, circle that she put us in. I went to a four hour intensive with Susan Weed and a, a circle of other women that came for the same purpose. We sat actually on the ground under one of those huge old trees. And it was a whole new learning experience to sit outside under trees to learn, to have to have, to have an education about, about menopause. And so that in itself, shifted my energy just sitting on the earth being in a class a classroom outside under the trees for four hours and luckily it was a beautiful beautiful weather warm sunny day with light breeze in june so it it changed my life and it again shifted me to getting in touch with what i want to do with my life how do i want my life to be and I didn't really even know that I was asking that question because, as I said, I went there to learn more about menopause in my, in my woman's body, my female body, that I didn't know about. So that was an eye-opening experience that has changed my life forever, I have to say, that I'm very grateful for. I met some wonderful people there. And so the drum, the drum is an ancient, ancient instrument. It's the oldest instrument, the oldest instrument, older than flutes. The next instrument may, you may think of as a flute or what um, David Young was here last week playing his, his beautiful Renaissance flutes. Uh, if any of you uh, watched the show last week, I'm sure you uh, it just relished listening to him playing two flutes at the same time. Amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, but the I think the drum, or I know that the drum was the first, not necessarily the form that I have here, but a drum beat of some type was the first instrument because the drum also is a symbol or an action or a sound that also mimics the heart, doesn't it? It mimics the heartbeat, the pulse that runs through our body all the time. And so when you connect in with the drum beat, you connect in with your heart, and you can actually help to heal anything that's going on anywhere in your body by drumming 
and getting into a trance and, and training your heart with the drum, simply by drumming, not by having any, any um, music to go by or anything you have to do, simply by picking up the drum and letting it have a, just a natural beat. So I will show you what I would do. Just pick up the drum and just have a single, single beat. A single beat. And if you carry that beat on, it can take you into your heart. That's a single beat. If you wanted to be more specific, you could do a heartbeat to calm down your heart. Slow heartbeat. Slow heartbeat. Slower and slower heartbeat. However you want to do it. And training your heart. Your heart controls your body. I know we think our brain, our mind controls our body. No. Your heart controls your body. Your heart has its own brain. And your heart's brain, it's called a heart brain. Neurocardiology is the science. Your heart has 40,000 neurons like a little packet, a little cluster of neurons in it that is its own brain, that makes its own decisions, that sends neurological impulses back up to your brain and out into the rest of your body all the time, constantly, all the time, 24-7 from the moment you were born or the moment your heart was developed in the fetus all the way till your heart stops beating when you die. This neurological function of the heart is one method of communication that your heart has to communicate with the rest of your body. The brain, when you think something, sends information to the heart, and the heart deciphers it and feels, feels what it, what it feels like around that information that the brain sends down to the heart, or the heart feels into it and checks in with its, with its own being, and it sends information back to the heart through the efferent nervous system that goes back up into the brain from the heart and if it needs to tell any other bodily parts what anything any other information it will also impulse that throughout the neurological system through the brain teaching or telling or give sending information to all parts of your body through the heart brain through your heart's neurological cluster of um, neurons so what if you were to um, use your drum, if there's something going on in your body, use your drum to get in sync, get your heart in sync, to let your heart know, to kind of um, entrain your heart to slow down and to be calm and to know everything's okay, because stress is the biggest killer in this Western world, right? Stress does everything to our physiology to cause disease, to cause illness, to cause imbalance in our system. And what stress, what happens with stress is these corticosteroids, hormones get flushed into our bloodstream, into our system, fed out into all of our cells, all of our organs, and has a detrimental effect on the weakest points of our body. With, if you were to, if, if stress is happening in your life, Stress means you're tense, you're, you're biting, your, biting your cheek, you're biting your fingernails, you're, you're, you can't stop moving, you can't stop talking, you're tapping your feet, you're bouncing your leg up and down. You know, lots of people sit here like a rabbit with their foot going all that because of the nerves, because they're in a stressful situation or stressful life. If you were to transfer that energy, that stress, into beating on a drum, beating on a drum in a steady beat or a fast beat, whether it's an Indian Native American drum like this or an African drum or a tambourine or any kind of um, percussion that you can just get a steady beat going with, you can calm yourself down. You can heal yourself. You can relieve, relieve that stress that is causing whatever the malfunction is in your physiology from the corticosteroids that continually flush into your system from stress, from stress. 
and it is proven and is known that 90% or more of all illness in this country, in this world, is caused, has a root, a root element that can be, that can be um, found back in stress. Stress is the root cause of 90% of what's wrong with us. So why not get in touch? Why not heal the root cause, stress? Drumming, drumming can do that. The beat of the drum, and you control the beat. You can go fast, you can go slow, you can go the heartbeat, you can, can create different rhythms. What I like to do when I drum is, is just to let the drum tell me what to do. Just to let the drum, let me pick up, pick up a beat and change it as it will. Go slow. Or fast. Fast. Like you're running. Or slow down like you're... Like you're jogging. Or you're walking. Or your heart's just beating, beating. Gently and slow. Gently and slow taking your time, slowing down, take a deep breath, let it out, oops, I missed a beat, didn't I, because <laughs> I had to think while I'm drumming, it's best not to think when you're drumming, and the drum beat slow down even more can slow you down like Ray Charles remember Ray Charles I used to love Ray Charles he could slow down a song till it really crawled it went so slow that I know he had trouble keeping drummers in his band because he wanted it even slower even slower. The slower, the better. Georgia, remember that song? Georgia, Georgia. No peace I found. Whatever. He would go so slow. So slow. So slow you might forget you're even stressed. <laughs> it's amazing what a drum beat can do. It's amazing what a drum beat can do. Or you can run. Or you can go fast. You can crescendo. a rest from that drumming because I know it's probably difficult on the sound equipment sometimes to get the right level but drumming not only drumming but what is this drum made from this particular drum is cowhide steer hide as I said I made this drum in 2001. I remember the day I made this drum. This is 16 inch drum. And I remember making this drum and when it was still wet, so what you do is you, you I get raw hide, it's raw, it's, it's um, raw hide is, you know, it's, it's hard. It's, like, it's just like, it's just like wood. Raw hide, it dries like wood, there's no moisture in it. But when you get, so what you do is you, you get the rawhide that's dry and hard and you soak it. You put it in the bathtub or in a stream or in water and you soak it until it becomes soft and pliable. Once it becomes soft and pliable, it's ready to stretch over the hoop. This hoop here is a 10-ply maple hoop made here in Manchester, New Hampshire, actually. And the um, you take the hide, you stretch it, you tie it in the back. It's a for me, it's about a two or three hour process. For you, first time for people, it takes all day with instruction. Um, 
the day that I made this drum, I forgot that I had asked the universe or spirit or God or whatever you want to call consciousness, source energy. I had asked, I'd put it out there, that I'd love to have a goddess drum. And I forgot that I had put that out there. I don't know how long ago before I made this drum I put it out there. So when I started painting this drum, I painted, paint my drums when they're still wet, when after the hide is stretched on here and tightened, after it's all finished, all finished up in the back, I then pull out my paints. And that particular day, I pulled out my brush and I put some red paint in the palette and I just started painting red, painting red. And it came, this, this is what came out. I did not have this picture in my mind as what I wanted to put on this drum. I let the paint and the brush and spirit move on to the onto my artwork, whatever it wants to. So this drum became my goddess drum, and I had no per, no conception of uh, of what a goddess would look like to me, actually. <laughs> so this is my goddess drum. Um, I love this drum. Then this gold came on, the gold sun, uh, the skirt. The, it's got I don't know if you can see it here, but the, it's got white wings. And um, I've done so, so much ceremony with this drum. I have these two little uh, circles here that I think are ashes from one of my fire circles and ceremonies. So um, letting spirit guide you, letting spirit or God or creator, you know, give you that nudge of what to do next without thinking, without thinking. In other words, letting your heart lead the way, letting your heart dictate. And how do you do that? How do you know it's your heart? Well, it's not my thought process. I, I was just guided to pick this up and started painting red, and lo and behold, before I knew it, I had a, a goddess on my drum, and then I kept adding this and, and adding that and adding this. And so the process of making a drum is so creative and so much fun, and you, you feel so accomplished when you, when you end up with a drum. You end up with this, this thing, and you make, a, you make your own drumstick as well. It's such a feeling of accomplishment. And then, when you have your drum finished and you let it dry, it dries two or three days or maybe in a week, depending on what kind of, what method you use to make your drum. I use different methods now. Uh, this drum was made with imitation sinew, which is, um, the, the, the stuff here in the back is called imitation sinew, which is basically nylon coated with wax. This is a very stable method where the tone of the drum will not get too low and too damp and too, um, um, thuddy, too thuddy, you know, thuds. Uh, whereas the other type of drum that I've come to make is using the lace, making lacing out of the raw hide, and then the back of the drum is all raw hide, and then that would take in more moisture. This doesn't take in any moisture in the back, but if you use the um, the hide, then all of these spokes would be hide, and the, the hide actually breathes, believe it or not. This hide takes in the moisture from the air and lets out the moisture of the air. So right now it's, a, it's kind of on a high tone because winter is um, heating season and my apartment is dry and when the apartment is dry it sucks moisture out of my drums, out of my raw hide. So this is still alive and if you were to make a drum with me in one of my workshops we talk about the, the animal and we honor the animal in ceremony and realizing that this drum is alive, it's breathing, it's breath it's taking in moisture, it's letting out moisture based on the moisture content of the uh, space that you're in right now. So in the in the summertime, this will have a, a much deeper tone because of the the humidity that will be in the air, and it will take in moisture and hold it a lot longer. So people that have um, drums that are made 100%. That, are, that use the lace 100% of, of the raw hide, they have to be near a fire or a heat source in the summertime to, to um, dry out their hide to make it, to make it um, sound, make the sound ring, the sound tone palpable and able to be, be drummed because if you get the hide too soft, it's like banging on rubber or paper. There's no sound, there's no tone. So it's stretching it and tightening, tightening it that makes the tone, makes the tone. So the first, my first introduction to drumming at that um, International Herb Symposium at Wheaton College, we, they played African drums, and I had never even had an inkling of African drums. The next, uh, that was in June, and then that same August, I went 
to the Women's Herbal Conference, and that was in Peterborough, New Hampshire, at the sergeant camp. It was at a camp. And there I was introduced to more drumming with Alyssa Starkweather. She had native drum like a tom-tom drum. There were 500 women there. Friday night we got there and we all gathered around this amazingly huge campfire fire that they had made bleachers all around this fire with logs. And most of the women knew the, knew the chants. They were singing these words, chanting these words, as a lot of other people had their drums with them, too. I didn't have a drum. Um, that, was, that was another big opening for me, a big heart opening, a big connection to things that I'd never experienced before, <clears throat> things I'd never seen before, through the voice of the drum and the ceremony around this fire circle. And I remember, remember we were filing into this area in the woods where the fire was being held and we went oh, through an arbor so it was like um it was like going through a doorway from from the mundane world into the ceremonial other world it was really really amazing i, I never thought about how how um otherworldly that whole process was for me i i thoroughly enjoyed it though i i just couldn't get enough of it and i still can't get enough of it because that's what i do all the time now but I went from an accountant into that, be, being immersed into that other world, into that um, earth, earth ceremony, earth stuff, indigenous cultural change and shift. And that's what the drum can, can do for us. It can bring us back to our roots. It can bring us back to our heart, back to the basics of love. Isn't that uh, going back to Luke and Bach, Texas? <laughs> Isn't that a country song? Um, but it's true. It's true. The basics of love, the drum, the drum can bring us back to that, to those basics. And our body, our body is of this earth, and our body thrives on earth-based rhythms of drumming. It thrives on that. So why not try it? Check it out. And if you don't have a drum, just drum on your table. I remember going to a program, I think it was at Mount Sunapee, where we were all around these big round tables, many people sitting there. I think it was, actually, it was a, it was a concert, and the, the band was on a break. And I was sitting there with my husband at the time and a bunch of other people, and we just started drumming a beat on this table, and the whole place, we all started drumming. <laughs> so you don't really need a drum, though a drum would be nice. You can look at rhythm and, and create rhythm with all kinds of natural things, all kinds of things. I mean, think about when you, you, your kid, when you were little maybe, or when your kids are little, you give them a pot and a spoon, you know, you, you don't really want them to because that makes so much noise, but that certainly is a way to start drumming. There's all kinds of things you can do to start drumming. And if you wanted to make your own drum, just you know, give me a buzz, my number's on the screen, or check out my website, and there's a contact information on my website. Talk, I have a, a one page on my website devoted to drums and um, how to make a drum. I haven't finished that quite yet, but making a drum is a magical experience, a magical experience. It's an all-day process on a Saturday, and you come home with this beautiful, beautiful instrument. And let's go to the next step about drums and drumming, and that is what I was starting to get into was the hide, the animal, the animal's essence. This particular drum that I made here that is my personal drum is a cowhide or a steer hide. I now make drums with uh, moose. I have a moose drum workshop coming up uh, the day after tomorrow, Saturday. I also make drums with deer hide, horse hide, um, buffalo. Buffalo is a very popular hide. Bear hide. I, I have a drum making workshop, actually a two-day drum ma making workshop with bear hide the weekend of Thanksgiving, every Thanksgiving. It's Friday and Saturday, a two-day, making your own bear hide drum. And we, we actually immerse ourselves into the energy of the bear and how the habitat of bear and the cave, going in this cave and finding out who you are and connecting with the, with the essence of bear. Bear is such healing energy, healing energy. You think about a mother bear. I remember seeing online last year or the year before uh, a photographer had taken, taken a picture of this mother bear that had seven, seven, <laughs> seven babies. 
And he fo- he found that same m- mother bear the next year when the babies were yearlings and they still were a family unit. And he took another picture of them, you know, big when they were a year old, still with their mother. Mother bears are amazingly defensive of their, or, or um, protective of their young. And that energy of bear medicine, the medicine of bear, the essence of bear, when you make a drum made out of a bear hide, it can, it, it, it can help you to heal. It can help you to realize your own potential as a healer in, in your own life or in another's life. And it can also bring in that essence of, of caring, of caretaking, of being a strong advocate for, for um, whoever's in your life, whatever's going on in your life at the time. So, um, so let's see, deer, bear, moose, buffalo, cow, um, horse, deer, mare, boop, yep, that's it. <laughs> I think I said them all. I'm actually just talking about bear, I get, whew, I just leave my body. Come back, Jane, come back. <laughs> I forgot my, my singing bowl, so we'll just breathe anyway. <sighs> Breathing is what it's all about, right? Drumming can also entrain your breath to slow down, relax, heal, healing. We're all here to, to be vibrant people, to live our lives fully right. And when we can't do that, when there's something wrong with us, there's something going on in our physiology or in our psychology or anywhere in our being, drumming is so primal, it can bring us back to basics, can bring us back to our heartbeat, back to the heartbeat of the earth. The earth does have a rhythm. There is a vibration of the earth. And when you're drumming, you can connect. That beat of the drum kind of creates a bridge between your heart, your whole physiology, between the drum and the and the earth, and the, the heartbeat of the earth, the vibration of our mother earth, which is the most healing vibration there is. If you can slow down to the vibration of the earth, which is around seven and a half to eight megahertz, slow vibration, slow oscillation, you will relieve your stress and you will feel better and you will become healthier and healthier and healthier as time goes on. And the thing about earth healing methods, drumming, herbs, um, things that come from the earth, they're not, they're not a quick fix. They're not a pill. Pills only, um, pills are fast because they, they mask symptoms. When you work with herbs, drumming, earth-based activities, meditation, breathing, and you create a practice around that, a daily habit, a daily practice around all these things, drumming or breathing or if you wanted to take herbs of any type, grow your own, make your own tinctures, or make your own teas. These things work by constantly staying in the habit of it, giving yourself 30 days to 60 days for these herbs and these natural natural constituents to get into your body and to shift you ever so gently every single day, shifting you, shifting you, aligning you, realigning you, bringing you back to vibrancy and health. And if you were to add to that, to the to drum, add to that drumming into your daily activity, that also would, it would help your vibration of your energy not be chaotic, but come back into sync with your beautiful heartbeat. Your heart knows everything about you. Your heart has been with you from the first heart cell that was created in the fetus when you were a fetus in your mother's belly, and it will be with you until the last beat of your breath or the last beat of your heart as you um, pass on to the next world, as you shed your physical body. If you were to uh, use your drum, a drum, to entrain your heart and, and tell your heart how much you care and let your heart then use that intention of your drumming to send out throughout your whole body through its own mechanisms the healing vibration your heart's healing care your heart's healing love that would go a long way to helping you be healthy be strong overcome whatever's going on in your body if you pay attention to your heart and bring allow that heart energy to well up 
from your chest into any part, part of your body or life. Love it. Allow your heart's energy of love to immerse itself or to submerge itself or to move, however that is, into wherever is uh, any problem in your body. It will heal you if you do this consistently day in and day out as a loving activity, as a self-loving, self-caring activity. This is powerful stuff. If you were to add to that the drumbeat every morning and every night or whenever you can, that will intensify the healing process, intensify the heart's love and the heart's sending out that healing energy wherever it needs to go in your body. And so we talked a little bit about drums. I was going to talk more about the animal hides, but I don't want to get into that right now. We're, we're coming down to the last five minutes or so of the show. I, I wanted to get into the next, um, another level of heart, heart energy, heart healing, and how your heart heals yourself because we, we talked about um, the neurological, the heart brain in your heart. Your heart has its own cluster of nerve cells that actually communicate through the nervous system from your heart into your head and through the rest of your body. Another system that your heart has is um, it's a bio, called a biophysical system or it, the heart produces its own peptide or its own uh, sort of a hormone, its own chemistry. It's called atrionetrepeptide, uh, an atrial peptide. I can't really pronounce that middle word. Atrial peptide. It's produced in your heart. And that responds to activities happening in your body. It responds and it sends messages out through the bloodstream as all hormones do sending messages to all parts of your body for whatever your heart is, re is, is um, reacting to. If you can um, bring your heart to a place of caring for your body, caring and loving your body, it will send that, natu that atrial peptide, that, pep that hormone, into your bloodstream with, with a positive healing um, message to send healing into your into your bloodstream and your blood goes everywhere so it would send healing to every every single part of your body so a hormonal the heart does have a hormonal response to your physiology and to your body so think about that another way that your heart is very very powerful in healing and that is through its beat right there's a there's a steady Da-dum, da-dum, da-dum. And if you can visualize, it, if you can visualize that, that graph of the heartbeat, da-dum, da-dum, da-dum. Well, all that graph, that if you think about the line of the heartbeat graph, many people thought that it needed to be exactly the same in order for you to have a healthy heart, when in fact, every single one of those da-dums is a little bit different, just minutely but measurably different. And what that difference is, is a message. Just like the Morse code we talked about in the beginning. Da dum, da da dum. <laughs> but it's not something we can hear when we listen to our heart, but it's something that if you get some very minute uh, EEGs, I think it is, they measure that and they can see that every beat is a little bit different, unique. Every beat of your heart, it wants to be unique. It wants to be a little, little, little tiny bit different because that is your heart communicating, communicating through that message throughout your whole body of whatever it is that your heart is feeling or understanding that you need. And so that is another way is that, that, um, that heartbeat that heartbeat sending out the message through this pulsing, pulsing movement of blood and um, it's an energy wave. I know we think about the pulse, well that's sort of the pulse rate, but this is actually an energy wave that precedes the blood in the pulse that's sending out a, diff uh, a message constantly. Every single heartbeat, a message is flooding into your body. And so if, if you can, be, can Think about, so think about this. 
What are you thinking about right now? Are you stressed? Are you ready to walk into a meeting where you know you're on your on your you're afraid that whatever's going to happen, you're nervous? Or are you going to the beach and going to relax for the day? Are you doing what something that you love to do? Are you cooking in the kitchen? Are your kids screaming and running around and making you a nervous wreck? All of these things that happen to us moment to moment throughout the day affect our heart rate minutely, very, very tiny, but they affect our heart rate and our heart's message to the rest of our body. So think about it. The power that your heart has and the power that taking some time to relax with a drum, drumming your heartbeat, slowing down, focusing only on your heartbeat, on your drum beat, focusing on that, that it it blocks out the rest of the world. It helps your body your mind, your physiology, your energy field, um, your chemistry. It helps all the parts of you come back into alignment of ease, of alignment, of balance, of harmony, of homeostasis. This is the power of the drum. This is the power of your heart. If you were to get in touch with the power of your heart, please do take the time to just listen. And if you want to uh, check in with your heartbeat, you can pick your two fingers and um, put them up here on your juggler vein. You can feel your heart right there. Some people do it do it here on the wrist. I, I find it easier to get in touch with your juggler vein right here, and that's your heartbeat. Just listen to it. Just feel it. And you can send it a message. I love you. I love you. I love you. It's very important. It's very good for you. It's very healthy. So if you're interested in making a drum or any more information about drums, please contact me on my website, which is on your screen, or give me a buzz. Uh, A lot of information coming your way about drums and drumming uh, on my website. And uh, I do workshops all the time. So remember to enjoy life. Think about drumming and take care of your heart. But for now, until next time, remember, your heart knows the way.